Mistletoe, Parasite, Ophelia, Deadwood, the blind bands, actually. So Deadwood being thrown in there. Uh, Tempest, the first lock. Keeper, the force bubbles. And then Artillery, Arachna coming out as the next couple of locks for uh, for Team Afraid over here. So not only uh, Artillery they like, but also the Arachna, which we've seen yeah. this played lately by Slick specifically. Tempest having a very good run so far in the series, winning each of the games uh, with some very, very big ultimates. Yeah. Uh, curious to see the Artillery and the Arachna. Maybe they're looking at the Arachna pick in case uh, they choose to let Keeper of the Forest go. I still wouldn't really go down with that. Uh, but yeah, a little bit curious. Maybe afraid that Artillery would get banned out during the normal banning phase now and, and favoring it more as well. Mm -hmm. I doubt they just locked Artillery, though, uh, planning to give them an Arachna carry uh, <laughs> if they were going Keeper. Yeah. That would be kind of silly. Uh, good point. Well, we'll see. We'll see when it comes to that uh, that lock picking stage yeah. here in the end. Pharaoh, of course, the final lock coming out. Um, Silhouette Moon Queen. That's how things are going to start up the banning phase. So Moon Queen made it through the lock stage, but gets banned up here, of course. So ain't going to see her. Torturer, the next response so far. Yep. Um, Fade Pebble still yeah. in the pool. Both I'm definitely them. looking at those. Um, that would be saw obviously blind ban this game. Just deciding that who was it that played it the first game? Wasn't it Yellum? That uh, uh, I think it was. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you played it. I think mm -hmm. you did a pretty great job with it. I mean, they ultimately lost the game. Yeah. Uh, due to Molly's big plays there in the river, but okay, yeah, we do see the the fade pebbles being a point of contention here in the normal drafting pool, as well as rally still in the available. Yeah, if neither one of those get picked up, okay, it is going to be Fade. I was going to say, we could very likely see them respond to both keys. And just like the first game, they got both Fade Pebbles, remember, in the first game themselves. Okay, there's, so. there's Fade. Is there a Pharaoh in the pool or not? It's um, locked up. So. It is locked up, okay. Yeah. Uh, maybe looking for a little bit of the Fade Pharaoh. I mean, I would... QSQ does get a free chance that I, I talked before. I do like the Pebbles a lot still, even in case of a Fade. I know Fade is really powerful, and mm -hmm. a lot of people consider it to be even stronger, but I do like the laning presence that Pebbles offers. In comparison, yeah. Ooh, going with the Draconis here. Yeah, Damn, they're known Just, to play that Draconis quite a bit. They are, and we actually saw them like skate by all these games without getting picked up. But yeah, the big old dragon come out here. Uh, Knox, obviously known for his farming talents, and <laughs> what a better hero to showcase it than Draconis. Yeah. Going to his roots, and uh, so to say, you know, losing that second game there. Let's just let's just set up our lanes around the Draconis, have him farm, and then take over eventually. That's the that's going to be the plan, I'm sure. Coming out from Q Squad, so now how do you deal with that if your team is afraid? The Pebbles is still available. Yeah. Um, we saw Fade and Pebbles picked up by a QSQ in the previous game. Uh, they still have that kind of a route to go if they so desire, but it's a little mm -hmm. bit more complicated now with that rally pick. Uh, I do like it though. Mm -hmm. it, okay, they went the Magmus instead. Yeah, the Aluna Magmus again. Will that be a Magmus suicide? Uh, we did see Panny play that suicide first game, so. Very possible here. Yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be surprising at all. Also, line stun synergy there between Fade and Magnus. Yeah. Right here, they, they are going to need to pick up a caster. They pretty much, you know, decided what they want. Pebbles going through the normal picking phase. I mean, that is shocking. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, he very, he's just so banned. So, so he's usually either locked or then banned. But, yeah, it never really makes it. If he gets to the picking phase, he's definitely picked up. But Whew. how about that? Just, speaking of going to your roots... <laughs> Voodoo Jester just picked up here by Q Squad. So Nova, <laughs> yeah. gonna play the good old Voodoo. Yeah, didn't necessarily expect it, uh, but you can never discount that hero when you see QSQ play, and they usually do very, very well with it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a lot of people just still think the hero is a little bit underpowered. Uh, QSQ set out here to prove us otherwise. We did. We talked about it. Tempest having a very good time this series. We very rarely see uh, Tempest picked over Keeper, especially in a first pick slot. But given the nature of their lineup and the aggressive heroes you see there with the Fade, with the Magmus, uh, going for the Tempest. And you know, at this point, they figure, hey, if they grab Keeper, we have the option, if we so desire, to have an Arachna carry, uh, help us deal with it a little bit, maybe. Yeah. I, I can't see them not going Keeper here. I mean... They, with the, the other heroes are just a dual lanes. Wouldn't make too much sense. I guess maybe they go aggressive. They go tri lane. That's like they better go. Be. I mean, but I'm thinking keeper Pharaoh here is what makes sense to me. For uh, they really don't have that aggressive of a team. Like for you look at burst damage. Yeah, rally exists, but if they can interrupt the rally ultimate. Uh, you know, Voodoo Jester. He relies on other follow up yeah. damage in order to get his curse damage off. The bubbles kind of necessary there. I, I I know they needed more magic follow up. And you're right. It's okay. I just 
it's awkward to me. Mm-hmm. It is. I don't like look at them and see like, oh, that's a dangerous team. I'm I'm really worried about going up into a team fight against them. Uh, it's all right, but well, whenever there's a dragon, I mean, <laughs> it's always right. It's the dragon fight. factor that they're yeah. going on here. Exactly. So, get to that mid to late game stage. Get him the Null Stone and the Shark Knight at least, and then eventually the Savage Mace, and then you're like, okay, we're fine. Um, Arachna, the final pick, though, so you called it, Emperor. I mean, they, they saw the Keeper of the Force picked up, and obviously Arachna is a lot safer in the sense of going up against a Keeper Yeah. with that Harding Carapace. Even more so, we talked about the fact that they locked that Arachna because they might have been planning on taking Tempest first in, in response to the counter pick Keeper. So, yep. yeah, trying to bait it out in a sense. Uh, you see that happen from time to time. So, mm-hmm. interesting uh, mind games there. We'll see if Arachna is as strong against Keeper as they think it is this game. Yeah. Uh, Arachna is going to be hit at bottom again. I haven't seen Arachna played by anyone other than Slicks, to be honest, as of late at least. So, as of yeah, interested yeah. to see uh, Yolim play play uh, Arachna here, and a great player himself, I'm sure. So, we'll do just fine, but we'll see. He has the uh, obviously just good starting set items in general, but he has the build up items for Energizer. Uh, sure. Always get excited when I see that item, so I'll be <laughs> keeping an eye out for it. But, yeah, you know, we'll Energizer see. fun, man. Especially in Arachna. Mm-hmm. Um, Magmus isn't that suicide, so again, going with that. And no there. real other option. Otherwise, the lanes are just pretty standard across the board. No real yeah. curveballs here. Other than the fact that... Is, no, Molly's jungling, so I just looked at his eye, but he's just going to you know, do the pull. Mm-hmm. Spawn of the dogs. Mm-hmm. And out go the enemy They're trees. So. Guarding the top. And you know what? They did. The, there was no ward place. Magmus still has it on him, but... I don't think they're really going to take advantage and start stacking that. At least not yet. Well, we are going to see a little bit different here at the end. Rally Voodoo Jester. They are going to man up bottom, it looks like. They're going to go 2v1 against this Arachna down here, at least to start. So, kind of switching things up there. True, true. I wonder if we'll see Rally actually pick up the Demoralizing Roar instead of the battle experience in this dual lane. Mm -hmm. And more so, how does does Team Afraid react to this? Do they then send the Fade Aluna bottom, or... Do they just keep it out is or even just a Luna bottom to support Arachna, so they would just if anything they would send one hero down to support Arachna. They wouldn't send the fate of Luna bottom, in my opinion. It would be kind of silly for them. Alright, so again they'll notice uh, very early on. In fact, Arachna tanking the creep wave right there, but we'll take the acid cocktail, some more auto attacks. She got a little bit <laughs> a little bit risky right there, because Rally and Voodoo Jester obviously here, and I, I don't think Rackna definitely expected that. But she stays alive, she just eats some trees, she'll be fine. Uh, but now very aware that she is going up against the Voodoo Arachna. So again, kind of curious to see how Team Afraid initially responds to this. But Right. Well, you know, if Aluna rotates, which I suspect she will here. Ooh, nice little harass coming out there. Well timed stun. Uh, didn't have to take cover yet, so no dodge coming out. Uh, with Aluna rotating to bottom, which I expect her to do here, that, that actually is a benefit here for the Arachna lane. Uh, some pretty strong ranged harass coming out on top of the Tempest factor. Mm-hmm. You see Voodoo Jester kind of hiding in the trees, but Arachna not letting that phase him too much. He's even trying to find the Voodoo Jester and uh, take him out. And and that's the thing with, with Voodoo Jester, kind of interesting in that situation. I mean, the Acid Cocktail can be powerful, but if it's only a hero by itself, then it's not nearly as strong, of course. So, you know, in that jungle in that jungle situation, Arachna feels pretty ballsy and you know, feels pretty confident that she can do that, and I agree, so... Uh, but yeah, you mentioned the Aluna rotating down here, so all of a sudden, this is no doubt a lane in favor of the Legion side, even, with that just uh, amazing harassment, really, <laughs> between the yeah, Aura, between range. the range, I mean, yeah, a lot of it. Precision, obviously, buffing her lane partner as well. Yeah. So definitely kind of a risk here by uh, by Q Squad, sending this Rally Voodoo Jester bottom now as a result of this, so. Yeah, if they can maintain lane control, they're fine, otherwise they... Oh, look, look at the... Counter ward placed by Sender. That is Nova's ward not in. It's 800 as a distance. Let's. See. It's just at a range. It looks like it's 870 or about. Oh, you have the. Uh, yeah. Well, you press K. You hold down K and then. Drag oh. The line. Oh, what? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I... There you go. <laughs> that changes everything. I thought that was a mod. <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah, that, that's the default. Anyone can do that. So you guys at home, just you, press K. Hold uh, it down. Just scold me, Breaky. There you go. That's how I make the boxes, <laughs> man. You know, mod, breaky box mod. Oh, I can left click. Okay, you shouldn't have told me that. Anyway. <laughs> I can distract you <laughs> the whole game. All right. That... So, yeah, it, it is just out of range, it looks like. So, that's unfortunate for Sender, of course. 
It's been 100 gold right there. 20. Yeah, and they had a very good idea with that ward there, saying, hey, we're going to have a tri lane down here against this dual lane, really punish them. Mm -hmm. uh, going to screw up their positioning, just not able to make it happen. Bubbles, obviously. Oh, Bubbles, speaking of him, going in for the kill right here. The final attack, not enough. Again, we'll use a final bottle charge. And that was dangerous. The courier actually with the bottle on it, nearly death as well. But Sal did a good job of pushing it back and will pick up his own bottle. But wow, very close to kill. I was going to say, this opened up himself a lot to get some creep arm and harassment. But he nearly got a bloodlust kill right there. But in the end, Fate stays alive. Very close, though, coming out here in the middle. Yeah, it's all going to come down to this next rune here for who's going to take over the mid lane. Uh, Bubbles does have a little bit of advantage in getting it, obviously, with the uh, with the Shell Surf, but I think Fate'll try to preemptively camp it. Bottom lane, using that web shot on a rally. However, the turnaround, the Voodoo Jester has a cocktail, the Curse of Ground, that is a level 2 Curse of Ground coming out right there. The Compel on top, Luna's in a lot of trouble. She'll probably fall right here, actually. She definitely will. Bloodlust kill in favor of Voodoo Jester. Rally's being chased, though. He will probably fall too. Yes, the final auto attack. And down goes Rally. So it ends up being a one for one. But Bloodlust kill did go in favor of Nova right there. Yeah, did he actually get his boots now? I saw he spent his gold somewhere. No, he's buying his boots on the side shop. He wanted uh, to. Wave's pushing up, so he might actually use the courier again yeah. for it. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of back and forth there. Oh, Draconis in the meantime at the top lane. Panny's in a lot of trouble. He's going to cut through the trees, though. He has support coming in a little bit. Oh, misses the Lava Surge. If that Lava Surge hit, that could have been a good uh, dead dragon, actually. Uh, uh, maybe. I still close. feel like he had the, the Blazing Flight and enough That's turnaround true. damage with Dragon Flame to be okay. I mean, Magmus was really low. Yeah. Yeah, so in the end, nobody dies up there, though. Um, bottom lane, I mean, it shows you the power of that curse at ground, even at level two. And that's yeah. that, that obviously they were aware of that they could care less if it, if the acid cocktail bounced. I mean, they just wanted to get it up on that Aluna mm -hmm. and to get the bloodlust, and so they did. But Rally died again, so yeah, Arachna obviously a big point for her is at level five, and you can constantly, constantly keep that web shot, you know, yeah. activated. Yep, and if, then there's level six <laughs> with the spider sting, so. Definitely a hero that skills well, especially early on in right now. <laughs> yeah, we've talked about it before, how it just does an insanely surprising amount of damage, especially as it levels up. Mm -hmm. At level 3, it's it's ridiculous. I mean, you read the number, 1125 physical damage. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a crazy big-ass number there. Minus 80% yeah. movement speed, too. Obviously having the downside of being counterable with, True. you know, minions, auto attacks, what have you, but... And on a 30-second cooldown. <laughs> That's even worse. Impressive. Worth it, it? Yeah, it, it indeed is. Um, but yeah, he's uh, joined by Aluna once again here at the bottom lane. And the lane is going to be pushed up, though, so Rally will farm up. And so despite that death on Rally, I mean, he is actually second in the game right now. He's GPM, and here we go here. again. Aluna's in trouble. The Cursor Ground is up. This will probably die. Can they get the counter kill is the question. Arachna chasing, now level 6, he's got one more auto attack, gonna dive in here, but he's now gonna trap himself, actually. He doesn't have any tree eaters, he is in a lot of trouble right here. Rally will secure the kill. Fabulous. Double tap for Jonas and Fan. No, and that all happened because, you know, we said it before they even went. As soon as they stunned the, uh, the Aluna, I was like, okay, he's gotta go for Voodoo Jester. Yeah. He went for Voodoo Jester with his web shot. And then stopped in between attacks. I'm not sure if it was a misclick or if he decided to start slowing the rally, but he actually retargeted onto the rally. And by wasting that auto attack, it actually allowed the Voodoo Jester to hide around for that one extra hit, which wind up in him getting trapped. So that's why you have to be very decisive. Mm -hmm. When you mess around like that, you screw up the entire process. Yeah. And now the lane to begin with. I mean, that was just, that was yeah, that was well, absurd actually. What, was, what should have been a favorable lane for the Legion team in the end after the adjustment, it turns out to be a dominating lane for Rally. <laughs> I mean, yeah. all of a sudden he has Ghost Marchers, he has the top farm in the game at 366, and on top of that, Arachna is in a sense getting shut down now as she is now, has her death. And Yeah, I, I just don't know why he switched. I mean, it had to have been a misclick more than anything. Yeah. That's more than likely because he did retarget onto the, the full life strength hero with a shield. I mean, there was no way he was going to save it, so mm -hmm. it had to have been a misclick. Yeah, so so dying right there, and uh, again, we'll definitely have to start recovering now. This could be the start of that. Fade is coming back in. He really has the Actually going to open on a Voodoo Jester right there. The, there comes the uh, the web shot from Arachna, of course. A nice compel, though, from from Rally on a Voodoo Jester. And Voodoo Jester will be chased down. The Spider Sting is on Rally right here. 
Not going to be nearly enough for the kill, though. I mean, Fade is nearby, but she's low on life. She doesn't have enough mana to set. Okay, going to use it right there. Burning Shadow's coming out. Port's coming in, though. Rally will fall as the power Don't throw connects. Attack. Bubbles is here. The shell surf. It will connect. It's not going to see the final auto attack. And Stahl gets a kill, but now he's in trouble. Doesn't have a takeover. Maybe going to use a kill field here, but of course, we're acting with that hard and care face. There we go. She doesn't have hard and care face. Actually, she does fall. And down goes Bubbles. Voodoo Jester can't do anything much in return. And that's how it ends. Yeah, big Toronto plays, nice uh, power throw at the end there by Sunder. Nice decision to quickly spider the rally as well, coming out by all. Mm. Yeah, so I misspoke there. Didn't have their Harden Carapace yet. Still doesn't actually, but it doesn't mm -hmm. matter there, obviously. As uh, stays yeah, alive. Oh, but Rally coming in here. Oof, I thought he was actually going to strike. He didn't even ghost marches. I kind of feel like he could have right there. And gone for a compel. Yeah. But... Aluna, Aluna was in range. Probably just figured he's playing it safe. Mm -hmm. He's going to go around the side, oh, actually. Speaking about a Luna on range. Oh. oh, no. The stun. The stun. Get away. No, why does she stand there? If she ran immediately, she might have been fine. In comes the spider sting. Magnus is here. He avoids the acid cocktail. No, he doesn't. It still bounces. But he gets the stun off. Tempest ultimate. Going to lock down rally. That'll be a guaranteed kill. Voodoo Jester off to the side. He's still on the run. But he'll probably end up dying right here. Oh, no. The steam bath actually puts him out of mana for the lava surge. It's not going to matter, though. Voodoo Jester falls. Bubbles choosing not to port. The smart decision. And it ends up being the two for nothing right there. So Team Afraid gets several yeah, they, kills out. Through the, the series of plays and the nice reaction, they've turned around this bottom lane once again. Arachna is back in the picture, thankfully. Now sitting at 2, 1, and 5. She's been a part of seven kills, all seven kills on this team. This bottom lane has just been wow. an absolute huh. chaos, man. Holy crap. Yeah, she has. Top lane, interesting stuff here. Fade's going to open, actually. Ports are coming in. Keeper of the Force does have a Rui. He's going to use it just before Luna comes in. Gets the two, though. But Jarconis has come pulled down. They got the tower kill. But obviously, the death of Draconis is what follows, however. So, yep. uh, you can question whether or not those worth it in the end, though. That's well, all. he gets some free farm up, up top now for quite a while. Yeah. Lane's sort of pushed up here. So, for him, it'll definitely be worth it. For Arachna, yeah. Yeah. She's actually jumped up to that 300 goal. I mean, you're right. 2 1 and 5. Or 2 1 and 6 now, even. She has been involved in all late, but oh, here comes Bubbles. I curse her. I the curse, curse. Her. I did it. The I... curse of Arachna. God, why did I do that? <laughs> Good play coming out from Style. <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, he's going to have a lot of safe free farm up here in the top lane now. And <laughs> Style had different, sure different plans. Magnus you know, I got to say, that is a huge play by Style. Talk about, like, momentum changing plays. Because yeah. look at how long he would be able to farm that lane safely if he got a little bit of H. Oh, jeez. Bottom lane. Seismic slam to finish off Tempest right there. Voodoo Jester dropping, though. A Luna go for the counter kill will be successful. Keeping the forces nearby. No root, though, of course. Uh, just going to Nature's Vell in, trying to maybe save Rally. Here comes a Kelfin, however, the compel to take out Aluna. And now Fades in some trouble. Magnus comes in, gentlemen, the eruption. He's going to get it off. Oh, the Burning Shadows! What a combination right there. Double tap coming out. Can he pick up the hat trick? One more auto attack. Keeper of the Forge is a little bit too far. And there it is. A hat trick coming out for Panny playing Magnus. Big, big combo. Well, we talked about the Line Sun combination, man, how yeah. powerful that can be between Fade and Magnus. Uh... Damn, what a turnaround. That was huge. That was just so beautiful, too. I mean, they were just kind of in a triangle right there, right around Magnus, basically next to him, of course, maximizing the damage. And uh, we saw the end result, so it was yeah. just very well played indeed. Uh, yeah, game a lot closer than it's out to be now. Uh, Dracon is still farming. Yeah, he's actually farming really well here at 340. Yeah. Uh, not really losing steam there. They are 2,000 gold up, but yeah, definitely... Definitely holding in there for Team Afraid. Uh, there's the Energizer finished on, on Arachna, by the way. So she actually nice. Okay, good. seal of approval for sure for him. <laughs> that, that is... I think it's the first time I've gotten to see it for like the past four Arachna games I've had to cast. Yeah. That's good for her. You are right, though. He is as big place as that was for uh, Afraid. He's still have a Draconis farming very well. And hell, the rally's up there, too. At 355. Uh, speaking of Draconis, though, the curse, man! The curse! Draconis may fall. No, the turnaround actually coming out. Nature's Bill going to be applied. He will survive. And now Fade is going to have to run away. So never mind. The curse is broken. He survives. By talking about the curse before he <laughs> died, you, you know, <laughs> nullified the curse. <laughs> I'm hovering over Iraq now. I'll just oh, throw it out there. Okay. See if the action we'll comes. See. Rally, man, he's moving up there. He's got those ghost marchers. Aluna is camping behind. Uh, maybe trying to set something up in case they want to go for him. Wow, look at where Bubbles is diving big time here, going for a kill, and it doesn't pay off. Holy crap. He was trying to be sneaky. I think he might have had an invis, actually. But uh, that obviously turns around on him, so 
Good response coming out. The Harden Care Pay is going to be used. Her ground is still applies, though. In comes the Seismic Sam. She will end up falling right here. The port out from Rally just trying to be safe. Not going to happen, though. The Tempest Ultimate action coming out. Voodoo Jester being locked in there. He will eventually fall. The Power Throw setting up. No, doesn't have enough mana for a stunts rally. Voodoo Jester is actually still alive. They will kill him in the process. Rally compels away, though. In comes the Nature's Veil, and he'll be fine for now. Fade, though, running an L. She tried to maybe guess right there. And unsuccessful, though. Keeper the Force is going to be caught, however, sitting right next to a Rev. So he goes in, Viz. It doesn't matter. However, it may matter in the end. He's still being pursued. Oh my god, he's going to get away, actually. He may get away. Another Cole's up. There's a Burning Shadows. Cole, Cole, just Cole, damn it. Cole! <laughs> he's not going to Cole! I, he doesn't know, though. He doesn't know. How could what? he? What? Oh! The minion! Oh, it That happens? Oh, with the sun? The minion stayed. That whole time. You mean the shadow? The shadow, yeah. Yeah, because he has to wait to hit. So I guess while he's still invis, if he's in the area, and then he can't. Oh, okay. That's horrible. <laughs> oh, that's got to be brutal for Keeper. As Magnus that also feels, gets picked up. That is. As Beta opens on Rally. God, this is a crazy game. We have 26 kills in 13 and a half minutes, basically. Is this Mid Wars? I mean, seriously. This is, everyone's like leveling up pretty well outside of the Luna. I didn't really. They, I didn't have Voodoo, I guess, the sports. I mean, I thought. I actually saw him being level six, but yeah, still high levels coming out, lots of action. This is this is insane. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy game three to finish on. Look at Fade trying to port out right here. He says bubbles, you all your cooldowns are used. I'm gonna go ahead and just TP on out, and he was successful actually. So great response from again right there. He's level twelve by the way too. This Fade, he's he really has picked up his game. Four one and six overall. He's farming three hundred and thirty five gold per minute. He's been moving around like he should be, and actually possibly saving up for that portal key now. Went for the uh, Strider's Grave Locket build as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's going to get his portal key eventually, but just opting for more movement, more momentum instead. Meanwhile, he is level 12. That means I would like to see, unlike last game, we didn't get to see the Bound Eye come out for the longest time. I would love to see a Bound Eye come out this game after he finishes his portal key. Yeah. Yeah, you have to. I mean, it is it is like, it's like a core build for Fade. I mean... <laughs> It's like yeah, as core as like a portal key for too. Magma. It's like, yeah, it's that's true. Yeah, Tundra as well. But it's very hard to see it. Top lane, actually, Bubbles is uh, in a little bit of trouble. The bottom tower did get denied right there. But here we go. Bubbles gonna get jumped on by Fade. The Cole comes out. He's completely out of mana, and there's the free Codex coming out from uh, from a Luna right there with a red power throw. Only level three, but still assist for the kill. So, oh, yeah. dive there. A lot of burst and the deep shadows and the spider, and now level eleven. I mean, yeah, putting. Get used to that energizer. Yeah. Yep. That's the spider sting that much more powerful now. And of course, a big diving tool, as you said. The spider sting. Yes, gold saved. Yes, 1300 gold saved up. So a good mm -hmm. amount right here. Uh, 15 and a half minutes into the game. The top tower is going to be heavily pressured. It'll probably fall. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, the we have initiation. Compel on attempt and push himself really far. Seismic Slam going to completely miss right there. In comes the eruption in the background. No, the Keeper Root cancels it. Voodoo Jester going to stay alive for now. Nova may actually live. Magma's going to go for the portal. I think he will be fine with it. Yes, he will. Keeper of the Forest runs away. <laughs> oh, geez. Several ultimates used right there. No kills oh. happening. Oh. <laughs> Stun almost coming on to rally. Nice little backtrack there. Mm. Um, yeah, they're going for this tower push. The keeper minions attempting to slow it down. They should be able to deal with it very quickly. Oh, almost gets revenge. What is going on, man? There's this non-stop hero battle. 17 to 11 kills, man. 16 and a half minutes in. I think it might also be a case of it's getting late for both of these teams. Obviously, the European. It's I think right now it's about what 1 a.m. in the morning on a yeah. Tuesday, I guess it's technically Wednesday morning. Yeah, they're uh, just, they're just trying like, to get we just want to finish this, man. <laughs> so they're just going all out. Yeah, but I mean, a trip to Thailand's on the line. Yeah, yeah, you can't worry about that. Yeah, you're, you're right. You gotta... I think they're just agitated and playing hard. Yeah, that's. we'll go with that. Uh, what did Fade pick up, by the way? He's just going back to base right now. Uh, she purchased something. There's nothing. She got her. Courier. She got her portal key. Did she get the portal key? Oh, okay. did she go Kodak? No. Okay, I was gonna say. Well, is that that or maybe a tablet? We see sometimes, but. Oh yeah, yeah no, she. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad she got a portal key. There we go. So portal key for her, and she's level 12 again. So, uh, <laughs> again, well, she's been level 12. But just to reiterate that. Now we saw the numbers for the Tempest versus the Keeper matchup. Obviously, there's a ton more that goes into statistics than just the numbers themselves. But mm -hmm. I think it was like about 37 uh, percent Tempest victory. Uh, not that wasn't for the matchup though. That was just in general. Just, yeah. Uh, but largely due to this matchup. So. 
Yeah, I, I'm curious to see if they're able to pull out with that Tempest pick over the Keeper of the Forest this game. Speaking of that, I was looking at them this morning. I, I, I don't have them on top of my head. and they're, they're on the forums. There is actually the same guy that did those for Cycle 5. He actually did them for Cycle 6, so mm -hmm. uh, they're kind of updated stats there. Kind of. Ooh, look looking. at the ward spotting out the Iraq in top lane. They are moving yep. to try to get a kill, but Fade is invisible. Yeah, level 12 Fade. There's a Harden Carapace trying to help a little bit in the beginning. Here comes a Spirit Ward from Vinny oh. but the Burning Shadows from Midas off, and the Codex comes out. Or excuse me, the power throw comes out, gets the gun to just right there. Keep it the force, gonna try to run away. The root is out. He's in a lot of trouble. Tempest does have an ultimate, not gonna use it just yet though. The dust gonna be used, but no, Keeper of the Forest will make the escape. Ghost March is doing work out. Oh, Never mind. Fade actually opens on him. And down he goes. Fade, 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 fade. Snipes him out. Yeah, she's got gold for the bound eye now. I wanna see her TP back to base, pick one up. She's switching. She went back to oh, straight to bottom lane. She has the portal key. Trying to get the pick off here while they're not expecting it. Perfect double stun lined up. Magnus, eruption being channeled. Go here we it. go, here we go. There's the double stun. In oh. comes the eruption. No, no stun though. Oh, okay, the British was used, I guess. Rally may end up falling mm -hmm. right here. He will, yeah. but they won't catch bubbles though. Yeah, I was expecting to see the uh, the Fae, I guess, leap in first and try to aim for the double stun, but it was fine. I mean, bubbles might have dodged it anyway. Yeah. They still got the important kill, that being the rally. Yeah. That was close. Okay, so big picture though. Nox here on Draconis. He is the top farmer in the game. <laughs> yeah, continuing and to doing, do so. Doing very well. Uh, yeah. 440 GPM, not slowing down. Uh, he's dedicated to trying to carry his team to victory, and he's going hard. Uh, his dragon is definitely something to fear. It is. He's level 13 on top of that, so you got to safely assume that Trunken Head and sure enough, the Mighty Blade just purchased, being delivered. Uh, Shrunken Head in the works for him, though, and especially against this Legion team. Which, I mean, I guess they do got a rack now. Bound Eye, please. Yeah. Bound Eye. I like, this, I like that he's <laughs> building Shrunken Head, but someone help him get a Bound Eye. Maybe Tempest is... Yeah. Get one out. Get one out. He's level 14. You're right. It, 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 it's a powerful tool, man. It is. It, it's huge. It, it's one of those things as a spectator, it's it maybe hard to tell sometimes, but as the, as the opposition, it's annoying. <laughs> it is hard to tell, man. Or it's hard to go up against, so... Um, Fade is roaming around continuously. No bound die, but still looking for the kills, of course. Yeah, you can obviously succeed without it. He's going to go for Draconis up here, perhaps, but keep Well, he'll going. need a lot more backup if he wants to take out either one of these heroes. He can interrupt the TP if he yeah. so chooses, but nah, Draconis cycling down to bottom to kill those ancients. That would have been pretty nice if he disrupted his farming pattern with that sun there. Yeah. Could have hurt that. It's only double stack. <laughs> only. I mean, it's still plenty of farm. Oh, Center knows the ward is up. Well, yeah, Center knows that ward is up there. Up here at the, uh, oh yeah, he knows, but he doesn't want to risk taking it out just yet. He wants to maybe get some team support as this team is clearing up with their own set of Ancients here. That's Fade level 14 again. Picking up more farm. I think Magma's getting a majority of these. Tempest has 13 under gold saved up, so could possibly be going for that portal key in the near future too. Uh, Firebrand finished on Arachna. 650 gold. Okay, Bound Eye's coming out right here. <laughs> You're feeling it. Alura is going to get caught. Nope, she's fine. She's got it. 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 70. Well, she can't buy it yet. Is she going to save it for 20 seconds? <laughs> she's going to fall back. We'll wait for the 700 mark. I think she's just going straight shunking at it. Shunking, honestly. Ah, she's got this. <laughs> no, go back! Go back. Go back now, five seconds. I know. I, you know, I was looking at Magmas, so I thought that was her dot for a sec. I got really excited. Ooh, Shaman's headdress just finished on Tempest. So he's trying to work towards that barrier idol here. I just want to see them do it so they can counter ward the river, uh, get some you know advantage down there, uh, maybe ward up the Ancients, start preventing that farm, because they are going up against the Draconis in the late game. Mm -hmm. Oh, she is down here, speaking of her Draconis, trying to maybe find him, but... Um, still just going to kind of wander around. Obviously, there is plenty of support nearby. Fade needs to be very careful right here about what she chooses to do next. Has about 14 seconds left, and she is going to open on a Voodoo Jester as soon as he goes Isn't for the pull. For Portal key is away. It might still stack, actually. Yeah, it looks well, like it will. That's it will. <laughs> okay. At least he got it. But, yeah, very, very intelligent play, actually, coming out from, again, Playing that fade, uh, waiting for that stack, knowing the support player is probably going to be running the uh, the errands for the Draconis and getting a clean pick off. Uh oh, top lane. Who's that? Bubbles? You're in trouble. Burning Shadows completely whiffs. But he's walking straight into Magmus. Oh, yeah. I thought he porked you backwards, actually. Yeah, he goes over here. 
He is going to run into Magmas. He eventually will get collapsed on by four heroes. And he will be picked it's off. It's a so. massacre! Good, uh, good pick off on a style right there. Mm -hmm. Thought he made Fair the initial idol. away. Um, for for Gossig, almost getting picked up as well, while on his way to it. Yep. How about Arachna, actually? So it goes to Firebrand, but not going to finish the Geos. Looks like, well, again, she may still be going for it, but she picks up a Mighty Blade here, so... Yeah, we see that a lot. Just the Firebrand picked up for the damage and mobility. Yeah. Sort of a nice little build-up item. Synergizes nicely with the Energizer as well. Uh, you know, combined with the passive ener uh, movement speed from the Energizer, you get even more so from the Firebrand. And together, he's sitting at 402, even rocking his Steam Boots, so... Uh, gonna do some work there, and Trunk and Head to follow. Just a good counter to the Keeper of the Forest, the Bubbles. Mm -hmm. Something he should pick up. Alright, Congor being attempted by Q Squad. So right now, three of them are here. Nova's nearby, just kind of chilling. Uh, good forward. thing they uh, don't really have vision in the area, and they have perfect <laughs> wards still up down here. Oh, fade. Oh, fade. fade! oh, Fade! You're dead. That's why you get a 5-9, man! <laughs> I can't. Why? Oh my god. <laughs> I it's can't true. deal with this right now, man. It's true. I, I feel like you have Fade, you have a high level advantage, you're over in the game, get your eye. I'm, I'm, I'm done stressing the point. Well, we, we knew that, uh, that that was coming. I mean, eventually, because he wasn't going to bounce out, that was going to happen. Sure enough, it did. Meanwhile, the Miss Lava Surge done right there. The Golden Dragon appears all of a sudden. Down goes Magnus. Cataclysmic Assault was up. And, oh, the Kelpha actually catching several heroes right here. They're going to follow us up and compel on top of that. Arachna's now in a lot of trouble as well. She's being in pursuit. Can she actually get away? No, she oh, could not. <laughs> that just snowballed big time. Started with the fade. All of a sudden, four heroes are dead, and they're going to push this tower now. Sorry with the lack of vision. Yep. Sorry with the lack of map control down there. <laughs> with a fade. That's why you pick fade over a pebbles, man. That, that's why you picked that hero. The Hellborn takes yeah. down a Legion Tower. Well, they get the tower kill. Congor is, of course, I mean, he's still above half-life, but I would, would not be surprised if they maybe try to do that here. Finish it off. Eh, maybe not, actually. Not yeah, Dragon, risk. meanwhile, already pretty much edging up onto his Slayer. Going to be getting that uh, Savage Mace in really good timing. Honestly, by the time he gets the Savage Mace, Arachna, you know, she might be finishing up her shrunken head. Cool, but... She's right next to a bounce. Oh, God, she's going to get caught again! She's going to get caught again! <laughs> this is what happened. No, you know what? I'm actually glad. I hope he it's sees this. I hope he hears me say it, but he needs to pick it up next time. And, you know, his team captain, too, y'all, you need to yell at him, dude. Because, yeah. like, that... I don't know how as a team, especially Sender, he's, he's an amazing support player. He knows all about map control. How are they okay with this? <laughs> I, it's yeah, no, it, it's true. Uh, you, you can't, you can't argue any other way. It's not like it's an odd pick. I mean, it is a necessary pickup, and yeah, I mean, it's not necessary. It's a very, very, very good one. And this entire turnaround in the game that we're seeing here, or the snowball, it has snowballed from this lack of vision and control in that bottom area. Yeah. I. Uh, we've seen even in the last couple of minutes how the like, momentum just completely now in favor of Q Squad because of. Uh, because of that, even so. Yeah, uh, yeah, they got picked up twice. I really. I mean, it's good for QSQ. He actually, instead of going straight for that Savage Mace, does go for the Life Leech pickup, mm -hmm. uh, figuring he'll get it eventually. Just wants to be a little bit more tanky first. Unless. I don't think he. No, he's going to get a Savage Mace. Just wants the Life Leech for a little bit more of a farming tool, more safety there yeah. on the build up. Yeah, he's I going to He'll pick it up still. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so just, again, kind of playing a little bit safer there, but really with where Q-Squad's at right now. Now, again, the, the gold lead experience lead is not overwhelming by any means. You still have an Arachna, who is farming no. pretty well. <sighs> I'm sorry, I just looked again, and the Bound Eye is picked up now. Okay. It's just like, yeah, I'm no. happy. I shouldn't be criticizing it, because I'm very no, happy it's picked it. up, but it's just... It's just too late. I mean, it... It is. It, it, <laughs> it, it, it could have prevented so many, so many deaths, and it could have helped you even get more kills even, so... Yeah, she does have it now, though, so again, that's finally the good news here for uh, for Team Afraid. And uh, she is currently down here at the bottom lane. Up, oh, And there you go. They're coming to play right here because a Ward Sight and a Rev was just put down by Nova. And, of course, uh, again, we'll go the other way. As she'll homecoming stone out to safety. So bottom push should be successful here from Q Squad. I don't really see Team Afraid stopping this. Rally obviously leading the way. I haven't talked too much about him, but again, he's been continuing to farm very well himself. 350 GPM, the Barry the Auto, the Helmet Black Legion. Legion has another 1,000 gold saved up, especially after that tower kill. 
Uh, yeah, and you know what I'd like, I'd like to see next for sure, uh, that PK route. He might go for the bulwark. We see that a lot too. If he's that tanky already, a bulwark on a mega tank hero is never a bad thing for your team. Mm -hmm. But yeah, still, he's doing a great job here, just sort of being that you know unstoppable sentinel up in the front lines here for QSQ. Draconis may need to start getting back here in the near future. Yeah, so, oh, never mind, actually in the middle lane, they're going to go for the middle instead. Bubbles is here, he just shell surfed, he's not going to port though. In the meantime, Rally getting caught, the spider sting on it, Bubbles. Bubbles will most likely fall right here, Rally trying to hold his ground. Bubbles, the portal key is still alive actually, the spider sting is chasing, but the nation's bell applied, it should help keep him alive. Oh, a big run in the meantime, coming out from Mally right there. It stops everyone in their tracks, Mally may get caught though it looks like. They do have that bound die, remember, and yes, she will fall. So at least they get the one kill there if your team afraid. But damn, 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 Q-Squad saving each other. Yeah, Bubbles and Rally surviving is <laughs> actually really, really good. I mean, they went pretty hard on that Rally, man. Just yeah. with that bear idol, with the home of the Black Legion, they just could not pierce his defense. Uh, honestly, Mally, though, nice selfless route there at the end. He did what he needed to do. Uh, still afraid they do have the shrunken head now in Iraq. Now, if they can pick up a damage item... Uh, and sort of keep the farmer bit throughout the duration of this uh, this token without getting pushed in on, they do still have a chance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, a chance, but it is scary, man. <laughs> Draconis is big, and this is why you pick up this hero to get in cases like this. He's at 546 gold per minute, and, you know, it's one thing to have him just completely carrying your team and him out farming everyone, but, I mean, the supporting cast is definitely there as well. Yeah. It's not like they're completely behind. Yep. at all, so that's just uh, even worse news for Team Afraid, unfortunately. Um, Arachna is level 16. You got, you got her, she has her shrunken head finished. And, you know, if she could stand her ground, perhaps get that spider sting up on, on uh, Draconis. Granted, she'll need somebody else to deactivate that Null Stone. Uh, Storm Spirit that, pretty much on Bubbles, too. He's 175 gold short. We'll have it after this push. He might even have a component in base, I don't even know, but if it's just a Staff Wizard, yeah, he's very close. Tower falls. This is the last outer tower or again Legion here on Fade. He is actually kind of roaming in uh, off to the side, but obviously not going to do too much. Bottom line, Tempest and Magma is quickly falling back as they were about to get jumped themselves, so they'll be fine. Uh, pretty much everyone porting in here from the Hellborn side, except Draconis, who's still here, but going to continue to clean up the jungle. Might need to be a little bit careful, though. Here comes a racket and Fade. Draconis blazing flight, though. Oh, he goes for the yellow camp. I mean, oh, the Dragon Flame hits! But now Draconis is going to be opened on. He'll probably fall right here with the token of life. The question is, will he survive after? Oh, never mind. What am I saying? Mally joins the party. He comes in with the roof. Fade's going to fall. And they turn it around. I, I thought for some reason they were bought him. They wouldn't be able to help him in time. What am I saying? Keeper the fourth yep. comes in saves the day. And uh, look what Keeper's got. <laughs> he's got that bound eye now, unfortunately. Yeah. It's, he's not. This Fade's not catching a break. I mean, he was ahead of the level curve for so long, uh, doing a great job. Everyone else sort of just catching up and exceeding it now. Uh, man, you hate to see that. Yep. Team afraid. Now have no one to self, no one to blame but themselves, though. That's for sure. Right. As far as uh, uh -huh. how this game especially has gone. Oh, Rally's kind of stuck right here. Well, he'll be fine though. Savage Mace. It's just around the corner. Double stacked ancients on the Legion side. Sure, I'll take that. Yeah, he actually might finish it before the. I mean, he might have time to siege base with it. Yeah. Oh wait, they might push. Uh, Okay, yeah, they know. Oh, yeah. nice steal coming out. That was a nice couple of steals right there. Draconis, Manda falling as, Dr as uh, Arachna sending his ground. He's going to pop the truck. But look at Arachna falling, actually. He needs to be on the run. Barry out of coming out in the meantime. Again, Draconis nearly dead. He has a token, though. Eruption being channeled in the background. We'll get it up. No, it actually got canceled by the Kelfin, it looks like. So not able to use the eruption right there. But down goes Draconis coming back up. Here comes Mally. No root just yet. Down goes Aluna, though. That will so far be the only kill. Compel just missing. Demoralizing Roar slowing down Tempest, however. In running Draconis. Still has that cataclysmic assault. He's going to be pushed forward, actually. But they're going to start falling back now. He wants to purchase that Savage Mace, at least, which he does right there. And that is now being delivered to him. So maybe just wait for that and then break into the base now. Yeah, so just shy of 35 minutes. Are, actually, actually, it's going to be a little bit after 35 minutes, I think, the Conqueror will be responding. They'll probably wait it out. they got the Savage pickup now. Uh, Tempest actually had Elemental Void up, but did not have the mana for it that fight. Mm -hmm. uh, just running low from farming and using all the spells and his utility items. So, yeah, and he does have a PK now coming up to this next fight. Yeah. We do have uh, Rally and Keeper of the Force again, kind of just clearing up the jungle here. 
Nova denying the bottom tower, it looks like. So kind of reset things now. Here's the game for Q Squad. Oh, both claws coming out. Hopefully not too long here. Just a quick break. Yep. Double damage bottled up by Magnus, though, in the meantime. Ah, uh, true, true. Not too scary, but... <laughs> yeah, at least, yeah, well, it will be on Arachna. If he gets it to him. Yeah, I'm curious to see if he's going Shroud or Rift Shards here yeah. for Arachna. I, I believe he'd be going Shroud, but... Uh, maybe just more for that straight damage. Actually, probably going Rift Shards. Ah. Yeah, probably going Rift Shards. Mm. Right? He's got True Strike already. He... Well... I don't know. I'd expect Geos first, more than anything. Yeah, that's that's what that's what I was thinking but too. The geometry maybe seems like he's going up uh, against a lot of AOE. Maybe he just figures it's, his illusions won't last. Uh, doesn't really need it. I mean, I still have other escape mechanism to deal with silence to deal with uh, the, the the keeper root. Yeah. Um. I'll have to see. That we will. Thirty-two and a half minutes in now. Again, sitting in a pause, unfortunately, so have to wait just a little bit longer before we do. Looks like he's good to go, though. Nope, never mind. Yeah. Oh, okay. wait, what? Oh. <laughs> so close. Uh, well, I mean, this is going to be a little bit of time to talk about tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be coming back, obviously, at semifinals here for uh, this GSL qualifying event and some big matchups being set up as expected. We've got our top portion. We have Trademark Esports going to be playing TT Esports. Of course, uh, them uh, also playing with Tralfamador now, joining up with that team. So, again, they seem to be more intriguing, I know, for a lot of people. I'm looking forward to that, and I think that team could definitely beat TDM. I, I really do think they can. So Yeah, I agree. That really should be an awesome uh, an awesome match there. And then in the bottom bracket, you have Complexity is going to be playing the winner of this series. So either Q Squad or, uh, or Team uh, Afraid, of course. So. All right, right, let's get it on. Big matchups to look forward to tomorrow. Anyways, back Dragon to this AFK. one. Yeah. <laughs> back to this one we go. Oh, well, looks like they're still having fun with this game in spite of uh hmm. in spite of being down right now and it just being a tense finals match as well. Not a finals match, but a final round match between these two teams. Mm -hmm. I, I know for me I would just be totally in competitive mode here. There's no way I could be joking around, but uh, yeah, these guys obviously having some fun. Yeah. Of course. In the end, it is a game. I mean, what's that? As it sounds, I... <laughs> but it is a game, guys. It's fun. Fun is definitely this is allowed. More breaky. <laughs> no, but yeah, they are playing for a lot again. I mean, this is it, it's not the immediate prize pool sure factor, but you get a chance to go to Thailand, or you're playing for uh, for that trip to Thailand, basically, all paid expenses and everything, which is an experience in itself, no doubt, as as you you've really talked about too. But on top of that. You, you're going to compete for a $60,000 prize pool while you're there. A $60,000 prize pool, that's a lot of money. And, and let's be honest, you know, being from the North American European region, and it seems like, at least from what we can tell, they've been very dominant. So it sets yourself up in a pretty good spot. Now, that's not to say the Southeast Asian region can't surprise us, because they most certainly can. I'm, obvi I'm, I'm, clear, I'm not discounting them in the slightest. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've seen that they... But, oh, anyways, we do see right here, Arachna, nice trick and head use right off the bat. Will stop the compel from hitting. Draconis is going to charge in, though. In comes the eruption. The shrink heads are up all over the place, though. Draconis standing his ground with that cataclysmic assault. You see the leader team spreading pretty well, but it doesn't matter. Eluna just falls. Magnus goes down. Arachna with that double damage. Really, yeah, she don't even care. The Tempest ultimate going to be stopped it's immediately by Keeper. And Draconis will stay alive, it looks like. Nox finishes with a quad kill. The GG's come out. It's the farm dragon, man. The farm dragon. Yeah, just too much for money. So even a double damage Arachna couldn't even remotely stand her ground there yeah. uh, against Nox's immense farm there in the end. 600 GPM by the game's break. Yeah, he broke it. Yeah, 602 by uh, by the finish, it seems like there. Mm -hmm. So, Well, that does it for today. Q Squad yeah. takes out Team Afraid, and again, it ends up being the only series to go three games in the, only, the four that were here. So, uh, like I said, it seems like we chose correctly in that sense, as far as entertainment value goes. So uh, it was definitely good to see that. They were entertaining games, especially the hell. we had. It was something like a two kill per minute average at one point. It was getting pretty crazy there. Oh, so. yeah. The start, yeah, absurd. Yeah. yeah. A lot of fun to watch. A lot of fun to watch. A lot of fun to cast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it at home, because ultimately that's what it's about here, entertainment, of course. With that said, though, we are going to be wrapping up for tonight. Going to be coming back tomorrow, then, like we were just stressing. Tomorrow, some big, big matchups now coming at you. And actually, I believe we do have a visual to show you guys as far as how things are shaping up here. Um, again, you got Trademark Esports 
going to be taking on TT Esports. I, I must say, I mean, again, I haven't planned necessarily which one we're going to cast yet, but I personally love love that love, want to see that one. I really do. <laughs> I mean, that one that really is intriguing to me because obviously, again, you got TT Esports playing with Trial Fedora, good, again, of course, a good friend of mine, but also one a lot of people are really curious to see how he plays once again on the scene and. They can defeat TDM as we were just talking about, so yeah, I they wouldn't put it past them. Victories over Lions today, man. Yeah, wouldn't put it past them. So uh, again, you have that match up there, and then as we were just talking about too, Complexity will now be taking on Q Squad in uh, in uh, the the lower portion of the semifinals here. So and then obviously the winner of those two series meet up on Thursday for the finals. Winning team joining Stay Green in Thailand, representing the North American European region and competing for that $60,000 prize pool. So, oh boy, oh boy, what a follow-up we have here. And for any final words coming up from you, though? No, just excited to see how this event will wrap up. I mean, I think it can go a lot of ways. I'm excited to see if TTS is maybe going to be able to pull an upset here or there. I think they, they have a lot of momentum going on right now, a lot of confidence. Uh, people talked about TDM potentially being in a slump. So going into that matchup, there there is a lot of excitement going into that game. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, once we get in the sense, QSQ is not a team you can discount. Just I, I am very curious to see how this is going to wind up. Yeah, yeah, both matchups again, awesome, awesome matchups, definitely. And and uh, sure, a lot of people may be learning towards that TDM complexity finals. But hey, you got Q Squad and TTE yeah. Sports, definitely both very powerful teams themselves. For sure, and can uh, can make those upsets happen. So. With that said, uh, oh, actually, we do. I do have a schedule. Oh, not me, but Killer Orange actually has a schedule for you guys to put on screen right here uh, to show you guys. As there you go. Of course. Uh, so again, kind of just an idea of where we're going here after today. Uh, so tomorrow we come back at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. That's 2200 Central European time. Uh, that's the the round of four. And then on Thursday, it's again the same time, 4 p.m. Pacific. It's actually supposed to say 2200 Central. Anyways, you get the point. The same time every day. So. Uh, here for the GSL. Friday, we got the Honcast podcast. Of course, there's going to be plenty to talk about on there. And then Saturday begins Han Tour cycle number seven. With uh, That's uh, one of two more cycles remaining for Han Tour. You can't forget about that whole event over there, too. So, oh, man. We, again, plenty, plenty of content. <laughs> that's just this week's remaining schedule. Yeah, it's nonstop coverage. Really is. It really is. Anyways, uh, to officially wrap things up here. Um, do all the Facebook, the Twitter jazz, you know, go to honcast.com, hontour.com. Definitely take a look at the sites every single day. That's usually content uploaded, whether in news or video format. And, uh, you know, have fun with that. But tomorrow, looking forward to, it. again, the GSL, North American European Qualifiers, will continue tomorrow. Until then, ladies and gentlemen, have a good night. See you then. Yeah.